Let's come to order, please. Good afternoon. For the record, the media has been notified in accordance with the requirements of the Freedom of Information Act and appears the quorum is present. However, Ms. Davis will call the roll. Mr. Bryson. Present. Mr. Coleman. Present. Mr. Dobb. Present. Dr. Dozier. Here. Mr. Duncan. Here. Mr. Elmore. Mr. Freeman. Here. Mr. Dunn. Here. Ms. Hartong. Mr. Jackson. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Peels. Here. Senator Leatherman. Ms. Leatherman. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Dr. Kelly. Here. Kim, did you get Chairman Levin? Okay. Uh, please note that Ms. Hartung and Ms. Levin both have excused absences. My understanding is Mr. Elmore is going to call in. You have in your packets the meeting minutes from August 2nd, 2018. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> we now go to the committee reports. Executive Affairs met this morning. We have one resolution, which is resolution 11-18 for the naming of the Fair Turner Park. Um, I'm going to read this for, for purposes of the whole board. Whereas Fair Maxine Turner was a distinguished alumna of Francis Marion University, class of 2005. And whereas Investigator Turner was a devoted and skilled officer with the Florence County Sheriff's Office, we, who continued her education with the Florence County Sheriff's Office and rose to the rank of investigator. And whereas Investigator Turner lent her skills, experience, and abilities to the challenging and vital area of criminal sexual investigations, and whereas Investigator Turner was recognized by the Florence County Sheriff's Office in 2016 as the Florence County Sheriff's Officer Investiga Investigator of the Year, and whereas Investigator Turner gave her life in performance of her duties while working to protect victims of sexual abuse, and whereas Investigator Turner lent considerable hours of her off-duty time to assist entities across Florence County, including public schools, school organizations, Delta Sigma Theta sorority, and whereas Investigator Turner was a devoted sister to her brothers, Farrell, her twin, and Ronald to her half-sister, Bridget, and her half-brother, Nicholas Lee, and was a loving daughter to her mother, Katie Godwin, and whereas France Marine University desires to acknowledge the contributions of and the ultimate sacrifice made by Investigator Turner to the state, the university, and to the community with a permanent tribute, be it therefore resolved the Board of Trustees for Francis Mary University, hereby names the Fountain and Garden in the midst of the Forest Villa Apartments, the Fair Maxine Turner Park. This comes with a unanimous recommendation from the Executive Committee. Do I have a second? Second. second. Having a second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes and the university. Mr. Chairman, may I just say one word with regard to the action you just took? You know, the, the, the sense is, of course, that we're honoring one of our own, one of our alumni, who was a popular student who came here, matriculated through the university, and worked diligently for a degree. But in truth, we knew Fair Turner in two different roles. We also knew her as a law enforcement investigator who came back out here in her career and worked with us on a number of investigations on this campus over the course of the years. So we, we not, not only knew the student, but we also know the professional that the student became. And, uh, and it's in that, both of those roles that we, uh, we have honored her today. That's going to be a gorgeous park. It will begin essentially as that area behind the villas, but it'll continue to grow and develop over the next few years. I thank the board for their action today. Thank you, Dr. Carter. We next move to academic affairs and accreditation. Mr. Bryson. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, Academic Affairs and Accreditation Committee met today. We received a, a number of excellent reports um, from faculty and staff who were present. And in particular, we received a report from Dr. Jokish on the um, outstanding results of the recent feasibility study and the subsequent, subsequent planning for the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering program. And at the end of that very good report discussion, the committee voted unanimously to bring to this board for consideration today Resolution 1018 for approving the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering at Francis Marion University. Okay, uh, Resolution 1018 is in your packet. We won't read it in full. The committee reports it and makes the recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Anything else, Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. Just a couple more points. Um, uh, enrollment management reported that total enrollment is up uh, 5%, and our new freshmen um, up 9%, and our graduate enrollment is up 40%. So those are all very um, positive numbers. And then finally, I would just like to um, mention that this will be the last board meeting for um, our longtime dean of library, um, Joyce Durant, who actually started here at Francis Marion working in the library in 1973 as a student worker. So I thought that uh, merited um, attention. Mm -hmm. Any question, Mr. Bryson? Hearing no question, Mr. Bryson, we move on to development and alumni. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We had a wonderful meeting <coughs> this afternoon. Uh, all committee members were present. Uh, just a few points we'd like to share with the board. Uh, the FMU Educational Foundation has initiated the first generation fund. Uh, communication is underway and will continue for the months to come. Initial donations are already being received. Uh, also, the FMU Alumni Association is planning numerous events during the coming months, including the 2019 Homecoming, Alumni Awards, Departmental Alumni Receptions, Regional Alumni Receptions, and Patriot Alumni Luncheons at major employers. And finally, the fall season at the PAC kicks, kicks off and has had successful performances with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Mary Chapin Carpenter, and Chris Christofferson, as well as numerous other performances and activities. The next show is A Christmas Carol on December 13th, so we hope to see several members here. And that concludes our report. Any questions for Mr. Moore? Hearing no question, Mr. Moore, we now go to Financial Affairs and Facilities. Mr. Gunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We had an excellent uh, Finance Committee meeting today, and I'll just hit some of the high points that we had. That the First of all, the university has completed the uh, audit for 2017-18, which each member has been provided a copy of. The uh, audit was uh, submitted in a timely manner to the Comptroller General's Office as required by law. There were no findings in the financial statements and the audit firm proposed no adjustments. I will point out that uh, Mr. Kispert indicated to us that there will be an RFP issued this year for uh, a new audit firm as the uh, current firm has been uh, performing this audit for quite some time. They've done a wonderful job, but it's uh, common practice to move on to other auditors after a period of time. So that'll be for a three-year period that'll be coming up uh, the next time the audit starts, which will be in uh, August or September of next year. Uh, federal grants were audited in accordance with federal regulations, were given a separate opinion by the auditor required under the current guidelines. There was uh, an unqualified opinion, uh, but there was one compliance, minor compliance finding related to student financial aid, uh, but that has been corrected and going forward and uh, that's all it was to that. Uh, for the budget summary, the summer two revenue was $817,000, uh, 19.1 million or 100, uh, over 100% of projection of fall revenue has been received. Um, general funds were already uh, budgeted or expended so far with 29%, which is in line with the expected percentage. And the employee headcount that we have currently is 502 with FTEs at 448.1. Our four-year change, this is important to remember, four-year change is only nine additional uh, staff was employed 
and during that four-year period. So uh, that's a that's a good thing. Uh, Perkins loans that you may be familiar with have been discontinued, uh, but they've moved on. We have a sizable increase in Palmetto Fellows this year of $85,000, and total financial aid for the campus is $52.3 million. That concludes our report, Mr. Chairman. Questions, Mr. Gunn? If you're no question, Mr. Gunn, we now move to Student Affairs and Athletics. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, the meeting was uh, exciting. I, I can't really tell you uh, the enthusiasm, especially of our student body president. Uh, she is going to leave some big shoes to fill. If you have met, not met Ms. Graham, I strongly recommend you, uh, you meet Ms. Graham. Uh, she, uh, she had a nice report. Uh, if you'd like to have, hear the whole thing, you know, we'll be here a few more minutes, but uh, it's amazing what's going on with SGA. Uh, uh, Ms. Ramey talked about uh, some of the things that are going on in student affairs, uh, Senior Night at the College, uh, this leadership uh, FMU program uh, is in its 10th year, and so on November the 19th at 5.30 there will be a celebration of its uh, 10 years of successes. Uh, some awards will be given out, especially the Leadership uh, Legacy Awards. Um, again, uh, Mr. Murray had an informative report, uh, exciting report from athletics. Uh, Fourteen uh, uh, students made academic All-American all from Francis Marion. That's up from ten last year. Uh, they had 30 student athletes on the Athlete, Athletic Directors Association Academic Achievement Awards uh, for last year. Uh, 98 students were named to the Peach Belt Presidential Honor Roll. Uh, the uh, men made it to the semifinals in soccer. The uh, women's volleyball made it to the quarterfinals. Uh, the women uh, uh, played last Tuesday night and, and won over uh, 21 right uh, uh, Wingate. And uh, men's basketball is 1-1 one and, one and there's a game tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, and I have a lot of other notes, if you, again, if you want to. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before he leaves, could we introduce the student body president? I don't think she was here at the last meeting. Let's and the that. fact that she's a Waccamaw High graduate from George State <laughs> High <laughs> County has nothing to do with it. Dr. Uh, Dozier, why don't you do that, please? Uh, Ms. Connor Graham, where are Stand up and let everybody say <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dove. Any questions, Dr. Dove? There are no questions. We'd ask to go to the President's report, Dr. Carter. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I was struck this morning when I when I got up by the headlines in the morning news, which <laughs> which proclaimed to the, the PD, if not the world, that database FMU has the lowest net cost in South Carolina. Now let me point out that this is not based on data that we've provided. This is based on the state newspaper's compilation of data on what the actual cost is of attending universities, both public and private, across South Carolina. And I won't dwell on this long, but uh, I would point out that we are the lowest net cost and uh, more than $2,500 less than our nearest university competitor in the state of South Carolina, and half the cost of some colleges and universities across South Carolina. Now, I, I mean this in a very, very positive way. I hope that, um, that our friends at the Commission on Higher Education take note of the fact that we are, in fact, have one of the most moderate tuitions in the state of South Carolina. At the same time, we offer one of the most quality educations in the state of South Carolina. And I might point out to the men and women in this room that the degrees that we offer are not inexpensive degrees. They're degrees in health sciences and engineering and professional writing and health physics and the like. So the credit for much of this resides with the faculty and staff of this university and this board, which has worked to keep tuition down at this university over the past two decades. But credit also goes to the contributors to this university because, remember, it's net cost. It's the cost minus the scholarships and other financial support we put on the table 
to reduce the cost of that tuition, which is a wonderful segue into the first generation fund. If you didn't pick up earlier in the board meeting the fact that we have a solicitation effort underway to fund those students that are the first in their families to attend college, we're kicking that, uh, that first generation fund off uh, this month. Trustees will receive letters in the mail over the next week inviting you to participate in this fund. I know you'll all be very eagerly awaiting those letters. If some of you are, are so anxious you can't, I could probably email you one of those in advance. But, but we'll ask the trustees, we'll ask the faculty, staff, we'll ask the alumni, and we'll ask the, the contributors of this University of Support over the past decades to be a part of this campaign. Remember, we're funding here the most vulnerable constituency we have on this campus men and women who are the first in their, co in their family uh, to, to uh, be able to matric matriculate into a college or university. We're very, very excited about that fund. Let me thank the board for passing the resolution uh, approving the mechanical engineering program. This, of course, will be our second engineering degree on this campus. The first was an industrial engineering five years ago. We've graduated our first class of industrial engineers. That program's now been accredited. My compliments to the, the, to the physics and engineering department for their efforts in that regard. Mechanical will be second. After we graduate our first mechanical engineering class, we'll move to the third engineering degree. And that'll be in about five years. We'll come back to the board and ask you to approve electrical engineering. And those will be the the, the trio of engineering degrees that we <coughs> seek to provide uh, at this university. Interestingly enough, we'll do the same thing. We started speech therapy this year. In about three or four years, we'll come back to you for approval for occupational therapy, and then three or four years on the other side of that physical therapy. So we'll have the, tri the trio of therapy degrees as well and those will essentially round out our health sciences program. One other curricular issue I want to mention, the faculty right now is considering the feasibility of creating a master's program in environmental sciences. It's, it's a program that I think um, has created a fair amount of, of excitement across this campus, not only in the science areas, but in the public policy areas as well. We hope in the spring we'll be bringing you a proposal uh, related to the creation of, of that master's program and, and will allow us to move forward with producing more and more professionals to deal with environmental issues, not just in this region, but across the state. Let me change tracks for just a second. So we received quite an appreciable appropriation this summer. Uh, two items were vetoed in that appropriation. We've covered that ground before. All of you know that. We lost $7.1 million in appropriations. But those, are, those vetoes were overridden. And, uh, and I, a fair amount of that credit goes to, uh, to our emeritus trustee sitting at the end of the table, Senator Hugh Leatherman, who, who led the efforts in the, in the Senate to override those vetoes. Uh, I also would, would want to note uh, Representative Philip Lowe, Representative Jay Jordan, Representative Terry Alexander, and Representative uh, Roger Kirby, who were all a substantial part of that effort. I would also want to recognize the speaker, Jay Lucas, who helped <coughs> us in those efforts very, very much. Um, that $7.1 million, some of which will be used to renovate the old post office as an extension of our medical education efforts, some of which will be used to build our honor center on campus were critically important uh, appropriations for us. Those buildings are sorely needed here. Mr. Chairman, we're deeply appreciative to you and your colleagues for helping us override those vetoes. Um, let me, uh, just a word or two about the completion of those buildings. So if all goes well with the post office, we should have that building fully renovated and be able to move in that building between the fall of 20 
and the spring of 21. The Honors Center, a little earlier, we should be in the Honors Center by the summer of 20 and, uh, and hopefully be able at that point to move our Honors Programs, our International Programs, and our McNair Center into, into those facilities. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I would conclude by reminding everybody that uh, we, have a, um, we have a basketball game tonight, and you're all invited to attend that basketball game this evening. I believe it begins, Six. what time are we? Six o'clock. That's right, yeah. Six o'clock. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Question for Dr. Carter. Hearing no question for Dr. Carter, we now move on. Uh, Ms. Jackson asked if you could make a comment about the first generation fund. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that and I just wanted to um, ask all of us sitting at this table to um, be sure to be a part of participating in this. It's a, a big part of what we do as a university. We take a lot of pride on educating first generation students. Many of us here uh, are first generation um, graduates and I think it's um, important that our names are at the top of the list. So. When you get the letter, please, you know, respond. Thank you, Mr. Trustee. As a point before we end the meeting, um, I've asked Dr. Dozier to take the lead on the board. So, um, as you know, when you deal with Randy, some come willingly, some come <laughs> fighting, but all come. So he will be contacting you. And when I asked him to do that, he turned to me first and said, well, so he's already signed me up. So, um, but he'll Robert, be contacting Robert and I have you. already made our commitment. So we're... I, th I think it's a wonderful um, idea and scholarship and certainly would hope that everybody on the board would um, pledge and you know you can do that over time you have to do it right away but we'd like a, a commitment and I, I think $20,000 from the board is probably not unreasonable do you Mr. Jackson whatever you say boss give us a shot <laughs> <laughs> We, we'll have, see. we have no additional no, unfinished no, business. Not from each number. We have no new business. <laughs> we have no need for an executive session. We stand adjourned.